Kamala Harris continues to lead the way in polling after a very presidential-looking speech at the National Democratic Convention in Chicago. Joining me live is Christian Daytok, Washington Examiner, White House correspondent. Christian, great to have you back on the program. Um, look, if you'd said this to me a month and a half ago, I wouldn't have believed it. But yesterday we saw Kamala Harris and uh, in a state where she could very well be the next president of the United States. That's right, Tim. Uh, Kamala Harris's speech on Thursday was sort of the keystone moment on what was really an electric week here in Chicago. And I think the thing that's important, you just in that last segment mentioned the criticism of Tim Walls and the controversies that he's facing. The Trump campaign doesn't exactly know how to go after Vice President Harris at the moment. And that's a, a fact that Democrats are seizing on the energy and the fundraising levels, perhaps most importantly, that Harris has garnered over the past month since getting in the election uh, far outweigh the threat to President Trump that Joe Biden presented. Uh, and they're looking to carry that momentum over the last few months of the election. It was a very different looking vice president yesterday, wasn't it? It was uh, an obvious attempt to look more presidential, more serious, less of the jolly laughter that has probably um, been criticised over the course of the past few weeks by uh, the Republican Party and in particular Donald Trump. Without a doubt. And it wasn't just necessarily Kamala Harris's demeanour. It was the tone of her speech. It was her wardrobe choices. There were a number of female delegates um, at the convention on Thursday celebrating the suffragette moment. They, they chose to wear white to commemorate those women who fought for the 19th Amendment, but Vice President Harris wore a dark navy blue suit. Uh, she is trying to combat uh, this, this um, uh, sort of critiques that she's garnered in the White House of being a, a non-serious person, someone who can't stand up in prime time and deliver uh, serious remarks on issues that Americans truly care about, be they the economy, be they the war between Israel and Hamas, be they the abortion uh, debate that's that's raptured the country at the moment. So it was not only a tone choice, uh, but it was sort of a, a presidential first foot forward for Vice President Harris to put the past four years behind her and tell the party, hey, I am here and I'm going to be the nominee. And if you want to beat Donald Trump in November, I'm the one you've got to vote for. What do you make of Robert Kennedy? Of course, um, he's come out this morning, look, he's still giving himself a, a bit of a, a, a rap saying that he could still be the president, which is obviously fanciful uh, as an idea. But he has backed Donald Trump and straight off the back of it, his five siblings came out and distanced themselves from him, saying that he's letting down the family. The rest of the Kennedy family had already disavowed Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s presidential bid. And folks that I talked to here in Chicago were split on just what a Kennedy endorsement of President Trump would mean for the race. Of course, lawmakers gave sort of a stock answer that this won't slow Vice President Harris's momentum. But Joe Walsh, an anti-Trump Republican who is backing Harris's run, was very concerned. Uh, he used some choice words to describe Kennedy that we can't use on television. And he said that this is a big problem. And I think there's something there because polling showed that while Harris is still leading Trump in a head-to-head -head matchup, she was faring much better in a three-way race uh, where Kennedy was garnering between 5 to 8 percent of the vote. That being said, there is the idea that given Kennedy's controversies, uh, this, this story involving placing a dead bear cub in Central Park, New York, uh, over a decade ago uh, that has come to light over the past month, he might not be the best surrogate for Donald Trump because there's, there's just so much to defend on his own. That being said, Kennedy's popularity among his supporters is palpable. Uh, he has garnered sort of internet fame from going on podcasts like Joe Rogan uh, and the likes. But again, this is just too early to tell what a Kennedy endorsement really means. Essentially, before he dropped out, it was still a two-person race. Uh, and I do kind of think that's the way we should be looking at right now. It's mm -hmm. Kamala Harris versus Donald Trump versus the couch. Who can turn out the most voters in November ultimately is going to determine this race. It's going to be a fascinating race to November 5, and uh, it seems a lot closer, doesn't it, right now, after we've seen what we've seen the past week with the Democratic National Convention and things like the statement from Robert Kennedy. Good to talk to you, Christian. Let's do it again real soon. 
Thanks, Tim. Take care.